coming back from a uh, closed session this evening, uh, which was a conference with uh, labor negotiators, um, city uh, negotiators closed session. We have uh, no action to report from that. Um, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Yes. Councilmember Turner? Present. Councilmember Matina? Here. Councilmember Shield? Here. And Mayor Stillman? Here. And Councilmember Perlet is absent. Is absent. Uh, if anyone would like to speak um, on anything that's not on our agenda tonight, you can fill out one of the sheets on our back table there, and you can come up and talk to us. Uh, we can't take any action on anything that's not on our agenda tonight, but uh, we're up here and we're cornered, so go ahead and get at us. Um, we can't take any action, though, or come to a consensus on anything. Uh, I know that one individual, Jennifer, wants to speak. Um, so, well, I'm not doing, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but if anyone else would like to speak, go ahead and fill out one of the sheets and bring it up. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'm going to pick on Linda from Lakeport Fire in the back there to lead us in that. Fine, you didn't even look panicked. <laughs> uh, uh, next up, uh, do we have any urgency items on the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, then I would entertain a uh, possible motion to accept the agenda as posted. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? We have an agenda. Um, Next up, we have our uh, consent agenda. Uh, we look at these items all at one time without uh, any discussion. Uh, we will open it up to the public. Um, this evening, we have uh, item A, which is um, our ordinances waived except for uh, reading of the title. We have item uh, B, which is approved the regular minutes of the city council meeting of September 6th, 2016. We have item C, which is approved the warrant register of September 15, 2016. We have item D, which is approved application 2016-024 uh, uh, for sponsoring survivorship group re request to hang pink ribbons from the decorative lampposts on Main Street, uh, month of October, to, um, for Breast uh, Cancer Awareness Month. Item E, we have uh, approved application 2016-024. Two, six, with staff recommendation to the Lakeport Elementary School annual Halloween, Halloween parade, don't eat all the candy, uh, on Main Street uh, on October 28, 2016. Uh, we have item number F, which is consider the League of Cities, uh, California Cities request to consider adopting resolutions on two proposed measures slated to appear on the November 8th ballot. Uh, one is the proposed resolution opposing Proposition uh, 53, and the other is adopt the proposed resolution supporting Proposition 54. Uh, next up, we have uh, item number G, it's a long consent agenda. Uh, receive and file responses to the following recommendations from the 2015-16 grand jury report, which involves uh, pension plans, nuisance abatement code enforcement, uh, after the 2015 wildfires, uh, neighbors objecting to vector control expansion plans, and Lakeport general plan and zoning ordinances uh, inconsistent. Uh, last up, we have item number H, which is introduce the proposed ordinance amending chapter uh, 8.31 of title 8 of the Lakeport Municipal Code regarding administrative citation appeal and set a public hearing date for October 18th, 2016. Uh, of these items, are there any of these we need to pull for discussion? Uh, I would open this up to the public to see if there's any comment on these items uh, A through H. It's a pretty good sized consent agenda. Seeing none, I'll bring it back uh, for a possible motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? We have a consent agenda. We're just like clicking along tonight. Uh, next up, 
we would have um, our public presentations. And Jennifer, we have citizen input. Come on up. Did we have any others? Okay, so I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come and, and speak to you. Um, I'm here on behalf of Lakeport Rotary, um, but also on behalf of Canocti Challenge. And Canocti Challenge, we're in our 26th year. Uh, it's coming up on Saturday, October 1st. It's always the first Saturday in October. And I will come back um, after this year's ride and do a full presentation for you with the statistics, some of the demographics, some of the things that um, you know, some of the things that I think might be of interest to the city of Lakeport and, and what I call stakeholders, because this event is, is unique to Lake County. It's really the only event in Lake County that goes through um, every zip code in Lake County with the exception of two, Upper Lake and Bachelor Valley, which are the two areas that we can't get to safely, um, from the seat of a bicycle going about 13 miles an hour. So they pretty much see the entire, um, the entire county while they're here. Um, we've been successful over the last 25 years in turning it into a weekend event. It used to be way back when, uh, when it first started, people would come up early in the morning and then they would leave that, that day. And we really worked hard to try to expand that to be a weekend, um, a weekend experience. Just a couple of pieces of information that I think that you all might find interesting is about 85% of our cyclists come from outside of Lake County. The majority of those cyclists are coming from within a three hour radius of right here. So they're really sort of a target, a target demographic for us. Um, the average age is about 60-ish, late 50s, 60. So um, these people don't hesitate to spend 12 to $15,000 on a bicycle and they have a pretty soft footprint. So they're really sort of a nice target market for us to have here in Lake County. Um, we do fill up every single hotel in Lakeport um, upper Lake and then actually all the way around the lake and the Blue Lakes and we even actually fill up some hotels probably over in Ukiah. Um, lodging still continues to be, in my opinion, um, one of the biggest the biggest uh, roadblocks that we face on growing the ride. There just isn't enough places for people to stay. Um, I end up with them at my house. Other Rotarians end up with them at their houses as well. Um, but I will tell you, it was interesting, the, the Skylark, we take over the entire Skylark Resort it was completely full, not only for the 2016 ride, and this was as of Friday before last year's ride. So Friday night before the 2015 ride, it was not full for just 2016 ride, it was also completely booked for the 2017 ride. Um, and that's the same story with the Lakeport English Inn and a lot of the, the hotels. You know, I'll speak specifically to Lakeport because that's what I'm talking to here. So there's a huge economic boom for the whole county um, that, that we get from this ride. Um, the fires, obviously, their, their reach has gone far and wide. We were clipping along this year on our registrations. We open, open registration on January 1st of every year, and we were clipping along pretty good ahead of, of record pace, and then that fun little Clayton fire broke out, and all of that national attention that we got. Um, the registrations have slowed down since then. Um, we're still gonna probably have six to 700 cyclists here, which is still a pretty significant number of people because a lot of them bring non-cycling guests with them. Um, but we're really trying to get to that thousand mark is our goal. Um, lodging continues to be, be a, a stumbling block, um, but the fires this year, I think with all this national attention we have, people have this view, regardless of the advertising that I do in the Facebook post that all of Lake County has burned. Um, we were able to pull the ride off last year the ride was on Saturday, October 3rd last year, which we know was two weeks, almost to, actually two weeks to the day after the Valley Fire broke out. And um, there were probably a lot out there that thought we, we could have canceled it, and we didn't. Um, the air quality was perfect. We canceled the 100 mile route last year, um, but we brought over 1,000 people into this community two weeks after the Valley Fire broke out. Uh, gave away a couple hundred bicycles, and uh, Lakeport Rotary was the one who started the Valley Fire, Rotary Valley Fire Fund. Um, to date, we started it right after the fire broke out. To date, we're about 850000 that we've raised. And that was really started at the Kanakai Challenge. Um, so we're really doing good things for this community. I am looking for volunteers. Um, so anybody that's sitting behind me that would like to volunteer, and anybody who's sitting in front of me, I know that I've already gathered a few of you up. Um, this is a fabulous, fabulous opportunity to be an ambassador, not only for the city of Lakeport, um, but also for the county of Lake. Because again, the demographics that we're talking about, um, everything is based at the Skylark. We set up a big, huge white tent. 
Um, we have music, we have food, we have all sorts of stuff going on. Friday um, afternoon, we're doing a wine tasting and hopefully beer tasting. Um, we're going to be bringing in local wineries from around the county and hopefully some of the breweries as well and putting these people in front of those wineries. Um, and also, um, we have the barbecue on Saturday afternoon at the Skylark. So this is a great opportunity. If you guys want to find out you know, firsthand what these people from outside of the county feel about Lakeport, um, feel about the county in general, this is a great time because you, you talk about a captive audience. Um, we certainly have a captive audience at this. They're happy, their bellies are full, and they just love meeting the local officials. So I would encourage all of you to, to take part in that. Um, you know, even if you can come down just for a couple hours on Saturday afternoon um, and volunteer some time or even on Friday <coughs> afternoon, just talk to these people and, and meet them and you'll get a pretty good idea of, of what people think about our community here. So we're, we're really proud of the event. Um, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of folks to make it happen. The city has been incredibly supportive. Lakeport Police Department has been incredibly supportive. The fire department has been incredibly supportive. Um, invariably somebody needs some sort of a band-aid that we don't have and so we send them over to the fire department whether they know we send them or not but they take away the care of them. Um, sorry you guys. <laughs> so it, it's been it, it's been a wonderful community event and Lakeport Rotary is really proud to be part of that. So again Saturday afternoon if you can volunteer a few hours or even if you want to drag some other people along we would love to have you and then on Friday afternoon um, from about four to seven is the wine tasting so We'd love to have you come down and represent the city of Lakeport. Um, I'll be back probably the first part of November, and I'll bring a PowerPoint with lots of pictures and demographic information. Um, I do have a few of the ride brochures here if you want to come see. You know, we try to make this a very first class event. It, you know, try to make it a professional event. It is an award-winning event. Um, our 65 mile was voted um, the Cycle California Magazine um, Ride of the Year for 2014. So, um, you know, we, we definitely received accolades for our ride. Um, and try to make sure that it's very professional. So I'll leave these here for you. Um, any questions or no, no questions during this? I just make a comment. Jennifer's right. When you when you work the Friday, the Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. and you hear these people from all over the state and country talking about Lake County, how excited they are about the ride and, and what they've seen, and the, it's really makes you it's really good feeling to hear you know people talk that way about our, our community and. Um, Jennifer, when did you take over being chair of the of the, the ride? I am on year eleven of my three year commitment. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna so, say, I, was gonna say I, I committed for three years. It takes a lot of people to put this on, but Jennifer <laughs> works on this all year round and she it's does a fabulous job. She changed this whole ride from what it was to what it is today. And it doesn't you know, go without a lot of sweat on her behalf. So, you know, she does a great job. And I she does a great presentation that will be taking over. Yeah. yeah, so I'd love to have you guys come down and represent so as many local officials that we can get there the better so. actually just you know um, my my brother-in-law is a, a bike shop up in Crescent City uh -huh. and him and his wife come down they ride a tandem they come mm -hmm. down every year they probably hit um, anywhere from oh gosh I mean they hit like 15 to 17 rides a year mm -hmm. I mean they're constantly gone on the weekends right. this is by far their absolute favorite they yeah. wouldn't miss it for the world right. and I, I think it's because I make margaritas, but yeah. still. My husband I mean, do the rest of it. Yeah. But they <laughs> love the ride. They they just have never missed it. Uh, gosh, I don't think I probably since you've been doing it. I'm sure. Um, I know at least ten years they've been doing it. But we certainly try to make it fun. We try to make it a gem of Lake County, and um, it, it's certainly a community event. If you look at all of the volunteers we have, there there's over 100 volunteers from probably 20 or 30 different organizations that take part. And it's really meant to be a showcase of what we get to appreciate every single day. So it's a first class ride. We try to make it that way. It so if you guys can all come and give us a couple hours of your time, and you don't have to work, just talk to people. Stick on a City of Lakeport main badge and, and rub elbows with these people. It, it makes a difference in their experience. So. That's all I have to do for a couple hours. You on the other hand, no. You know, you know, and you don't. Know. The rest of you guys, a couple hours all now support. <laughs> So thank you. I'll be back in November at some point and have a nice presentation for you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Right. For those that haven't sat through those presentations, they're unbelievably detailed. There's an unbelievable amount of revenue that comes in. Uh, people that get drawn from all over the place. It's uh, it's it's. We look forward to that. It's going to be good.
Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, item B, which is a proclamation um, proclaiming, honoring the contributions of the uh, Lakeport Firefighters Association. A um, little background before I have everybody come up. Um, Lake, I sit, I sit in on the board meetings for Lakeport Fire, and um, I think for a while now, with the the amount of um, work that this diligent group does, and and the funds that they bring in, and, and the access that it gives Lakeport Fire, especially with the downsizing through the uh, through with the economy for a number of years, um, I think it was really the interest of Lakeport Fire and the Fire Board to to bring these, this diligent group in and really give them some sort of acknowledgement. Um, I see them sit in on the meetings. I know they do a lot of work. They have uh, huge fundraising um, uh, events, uh, which uh, we can talk about a little bit. But um, uh, even though Lakeport Fire used to be under the city entity, it's now a county entity, but I guarantee you if one of your houses is burning, in Lakeport, they're the ones that are going to come help you. So they are Lakeport Fire. So um, we thought this would be a good venue. Uh, the county has several fire districts under their arm, so it's nice to be able to do that here tonight. Um, so I have um, I have a uh, proclamation here. I'm going to share it out here with the uh, director of the fire board. But I'd like to, if everyone can come on up, I'd like to have Lakeport Fire personnel come up. Uh, fire board and uh, any, any members of the uh, uh, of the volunteer group, everyone come on up, and we'll just uh, get this read and. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in the essence of, of photographs, you may have to have them on that behind yeah, we, the yeah, podium there and put them all behind we, them in yeah, front of the dais. Yeah, that might be a good idea. There. Just come on inside there. We'll file on in. There you go. we got to take the camera over here. Especially George, you should keep them out of the photo. Right, right, anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come through here. Come on. Oh, forward. Spread out over that way. Um, another thing I'd like to say is the beginning of this, which uh, I will have uh, Mr. Whitehead here read, and then I'll jump in to finish this up. Um, this is from the City Council of the City of Lakeport, but really, um, I should have had this read the City Council of the City of Lakeport and Lakeport Fire and Lakeport Fire Board. Um, so uh, this isn't just from the, the City Council. And uh, John, I can have you start off there and just uh, you can head down to about there and then I'll take over. All right. Whereas the Lakeport Volunteer Firefighters Association is a 501c3 nonprofit organization focusing on helping and giving back to the community by providing assistance in fire prevention and suppression medical emergency response, public safety, and education. The organization has been around in some form or another since the early 1900s. And whereas the association today consists of both paid and volunteer firefighters that respond to calls for sick and injured people, motor vehicle accidents, chemical spills, vegetation fires, and structure fires. Members also volunteer countless other hours coaching youth athletic activities, 4-H, FFA, and participate in many other community events, and whereas, as a nonprofit, one of the association's functions is to raise money to assist the Lakeport Fire Protection District. As a special district, the Lakeport Fire Protection District is, is funded primarily through property tax assess assessments, and whereas, recession and subsequent decrease in property values have an impact on the district's financial position. Funding to keep staffing at a safe level has been a number one priority. However, this leaves a deficiency in funding for purchases such as safety and emergency equipment. Just start running out of state right about there, don't you? <laughs> and whereas the Lakeport Volunteer Firefighters Association raises funds 
Through the annual dinner, dance, and auction fundraiser to help purchase these necessary items in addition, funds raised also allow for further education and training for the firefighters and whereas over the past several years, proceeds from the Lakeport Volunteer Firefighters Association dinner, dance, and auction is allowed for the purchase of needed items such as new structure turnouts, 30 sets of SCBAs, which are self-contained breathing apparatuses, if you don't know that. I know these terms. And is it Bauer? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Bauer, uh, breathing air purification systems, and whereas fundraising efforts also support the Matt Black Memorial Scholarship Fund. Every year the association provides $2,000 to students for college level study and fire and emergency services. And whereas the Lakeport Volunteer Firefighters Association proudly strives to continue an incredible tradition of selfless service, hard work, and dedication ensuring that the firefighters may safely provide the help necessary to keep our community out of harm's way. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council and Lakeport Fire of the City of Lakeport does hereby recognize and extend its appreciation to and commend Lakeport Volunteer Firefighters Association. I have hereunto set my hand to and caused the seal of the City of Lakeport to be affixed this 20th day of September 2016. Mayor Mark Scone. Would you like to say anything else other than? Uh, the Volunteer Firefighter Association has a wonderful job, especially with the with the uh, dinner dance auction. They put out an unbelievable amount of work and uh, put on one heck of a party. And uh, it's uh, it creates uh, a great deal of money to uh, continue on with this tradition. And uh, it's, it's coming up soon, and hope everybody's able to attend. And uh, they do just a, a wonderful job for the community, and we thank them for it. Thank you. On the 15th of October. 15th of October. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. I have a question. Yes. What, what time do you start serving those margaritas? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to bike at least 65 miles to get one of the margaritas. I cut you out. You know, I'll tell you what, you do 65 miles, you can't well, bike the margarita. You can like, ask me on a bicycle. Yeah. Ask me on a bicycle. <laughs> You're just giving him too much detail now. You could have just left it at 65 miles. Just, and, uh, just all all of us would be at his house. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I know everybody's going to say that I uh, just wanted to split that up and not read the whole thing, but uh, I thought it appropriate to. Uh, have uh, both Lakeport and uh, Lakeport, Lakeport, uh, City of Lakeport and Lakeport Fire to, to both read that. Uh, so, uh, very good group, do a lot of good work. Um, next up, we have a presentation um, of the Government Finance Officers uh, Association, the GFOA, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial reporting to the former city finance director, Dan Bofo, on behalf of the city of Lakeport. Dan, good to see you. Dan. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so I think he's disqualified now, right? Uh, no. Trying to for somebody else. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to yeah. It's just not going to surprise me if he's still getting awards like four years from now. It's in a really nice folder. Maybe we're we're we can try. use that for yeah. Yeah. Four we're four ahead of uh, the city of Ukiah in that regard, so we're going to try that's true. Actually, if I put one more thing in there, Dan, I just actually wanted to read this uh, one part here, which some people don't realize, is the uh, Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in government accounting and financial reporting 
and its um, attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management, which goes both for the city of Lakeport and your position. Um, former position. Former position. Too bad right? you're to us now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was your name again? <laughs> well, thank you, Mayor and Council Members, for inviting me back to um, receive the award on behalf of the city. It's the city's award. And um, uh, we were very excited about um, receiving it. And when I, I heard that we had received it, um, I was thrilled. And um, I think it's the second year that mm -hmm. in a row that we received it. So i um, very excited about that. But hopefully um, the take home message for the community is that Lakeport has a very high standard as far as reporting its um, financial condition to the community. And um, we followed those standards as put out by GFOA. And um, it's not a, an award for first place, it's an award for um, meeting that mark and hitting that standard. Excellent. And so um, hopefully, um, it's, a, it's a long document, but hopefully people do take a, at least a quick glance at it um, or at least, at least read the preface to the, the document and, um, and take that message home with them that Lakeport really strives to, to let its community know um, how it's doing and where um, the community's resources were spent. So hopefully that message is, is received by the community. But thank you for inviting me back. We appreciate it. And uh, we also miss you, by the way. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> there we go. Hold that out. Let you get, I'm gonna let you get There's another it. former, another former that's taking a picture right there. I know. Uh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I put my arm around it, but it's short. Yeah. Boys do know that that means they get ice cream now, right? <laughs> yeah, Dad gets some more than ice cream. Oh, it's not too late. Brian, good friend. Tell them, Dad, it's not too late to have ice cream. You'll be babysitting, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, item number six, which is council business. Uh, we are going to be uh, looking at a Lord Lakeshore ER project. Uh, this is going to be the community development director. And we're looking at the uh, storm uh, damage project. Yes, Kevin. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this project dates back to uh, storm damage along Lakeshore Boulevard occurring um, in 2007. Uh, the storm events during that period uh, damaged the slope protection measures uh, located between um, the lake along Lakeshore Boulevard uh, for a section of roadway stretching just roughly south of Sayre, um, just to, just slightly north of Jones. So it's not a very large section of roadway. Um, uh, if left in its current condition, Lakeshore Boulevard is susceptible to serious damage from future high water and storm events. Uh, the city applied for and was granted um, federal aid emergency repair grant monies through the Federal Highway Administration uh, which covers 88%, uh, just roughly over 88% of the, uh, the project, with the city being responsible for an 11% portion of the project. Uh, due to its location, this project has required some considerable environmental uh, review. And as an effort to minimize those environmental impacts, uh, this project has been timed as such to occur at a point when the lake is at its lowest, uh, hopefully the end of you know, October, November period, you know, prior to the onset of rain, so that this project can occur uh, where when the water is not present in the construction zone. Uh, so that's the kind of the, the importance of the timing now. Uh, the project consists of removing the existing concrete and, um, and replacing with engineered riprap. It's kind of a, the existing soil protection there has kind of been put in place hodgepodge over several non-engineered riprap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so the engineered riprap will also include some bio plantings of willows and stuff to help uh, stabilize the bank area there as well. The project does include the replacement of some damage curves and uh, small sections of the roadway edge. Unfortunately, not that much. I mean, we wish that you know, we were able to use some of this money to, to help uh, repair that section of roadway as well. But 
it's mostly to um, protect against future damage uh, from storm events. Uh, the project does include an um, alternative uh, that has a four foot um, asphalt path uh, existing between the existing curb and the slope protection area, uh, which would also include some boulders to delineate that path. Um, this uh, kind of formalizes the already existing informal pathway that gets used there quite a bit, makes it a safer area. We know it's already being used. Um, there's a very good likelihood that this will be covered by that same ratio where the, um, the highway administration would pick up 88%, but we wanted to solicit the council's opinion on the importance of that element to the project. It's an alternative. It was included in the bids. Um, so it's something that can easily be removed or, um, you know, if, if, um, if it's not funded, it is something that we have the option of funding in its entirety ourselves. So the bids, did in, the bids received did include that alternative, so we wanted to kind of bring that to your guys' attention as, and, and solicit your opinion on it. Uh, the bid was, uh, we received two uh, valid bids uh, when this was uh, opened in August. And um, the low bid came in with Granite Construction Company um, for a total, which includes the alternative of just over $500,000. Um, as also noted in the staff report, um, we did receive uh, some inquiries in regards from the other bidder as to whether or not uh, the low bidder, Granite Construction, met all of their federal requirements for the DBE program. Um, staff took a look at the um, the DBE work that uh, was uh, done by Granite Construction and requested um, a solicitation of their good faith effort. And um, Councilwoman Turner uh, called me a little, uh, what was it, a couple days ago and uh, wanted some additional information on that. And so I was able to pull up the email chain between our city engineer and other engineering staff uh, back and forth with Caltrans. So essentially what we did is we asked Granite to, su to submit their good faith efforts to comply with this federal program. They supplied over 150 pages to us. We reviewed it and made the um, notation that it did meet the good faith effort. We forward that on to Caltrans, who is the administrator of the Federal Highway uh, Program for, for California. And they also concurred with our, um, with, our, with our decision that it did meet that standard. And um, we also informed Argonaut constructors uh, in a notice of intent to award this project to Granite that they did have a 72-hour uh, option to appeal that uh, decision, and uh, that has since expired. And uh, our city engineer talked with them over about the, the project specifics, and they, at that time, indicated that they weren't willing to appeal and they were satisfied with the, with the investigation as well. So, in a nutshell, that's we're kind of asking uh, to go ahead and award this project to the low bidder, Granite Construction. I want you guys to kind of take a look and get your input on uh, whether or not, how important you think that ad alternative is if, uh, for instance, it's not funded through the federal aid uh, project, and then also to uh, concur with uh, staff and Caltrans is finding that granite constructors did meet their good faith effort uh, with the DPD program. So, any questions? Um, I just want to make sure I understand, it just goes from Sayer to Jones, it's just the one block, so, well, I mean, I love the idea of the four, it's basically a sidewalk, right? But it's going to go to nothing and start from nothing? I mean, there, there already is an informal path that, that goes a little further beyond that, that kind of loops back around the corner there. I mean, so folks are using it, so it, it and makes then, it... And like, what about if you kept going to Lane Street? What would be there? There's, with the top of the informal riprap bank is you concrete and over. You, you can walk on it. It's... You know, it's it's not it's not sidewalk by any stretch of the imagination, but there is a pedestrian pathway that gets used quite frequently. Well, I've walked it because there's not really sidewalk on the other side. And it's yeah. It's front yards. Um, so I was just trying to picture if it was worth the extra twenty four thousand dollars. If you don't spend the twenty four thousand, what what do you have? It it just would not be constructed. It would just be a uh, probably packed uh, gravel you know area there. Uh, you know, coming back to the return of the curb. So my guess is it probably would still be used informally, but it's not going to be an asphalt, you know, path, the pedestrian path. And then if people walk on that, is it going to fall apart? No, no more than the existing, the existing uh, area does. Okay. Two questions. One, what, what would that 
length cost approximately if it was a site walk? Um, and two, what's the likelihood that we would get the um, federal participation rate of 88.5% for, for an actual sidewalk build out? No, not for the sidewalk, but for this, you, you had mentioned that it's oh, possible yeah. for that. In, in talking with Paul Perrin, our city engineer, he, he feels pretty confident because it, this was, so this has always been part of the bid process, which has been reviewed by Caltrans and they haven't had any issue with it being there. Um, but it's, it's just sort of sitting there as an alternative. We were worried, as we have been in other projects, that the bids would be coming back significantly higher than anticipated. This one's, it's slightly higher, but it's definitely within contingency. So uh, we, feel, we feel pretty comfortable that it will be in there. But it is noted as an alternative, so there is a possibility that, uh, that Caltrans may, may decide that it's not, a, doesn't meet their standards on it. And what would a sidewalk cost in that same section? You know, I don't know offhand of uh, you know, specifically there. I mean, it's all gonna, with, with the um, slope protection coming back up to grade, it's not like there's significant slope there, so it would be on the, you know, when, when we're constructing residential sidewalk, there's kind of a high end and a low end depending upon the topography. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely smaller, but I don't know a, a cost off the top of my head. I wish, I wish Doug was here with us. He would probably know right at the top of his head what it would be for a linear foot. So if we get the participation rate, then really our contribution as a city will be roughly $3,000. Correct. Well, under that, actually. Correct. One of the things I just asked David about was can we, um, accept this with the contingency that we get funded the 88 percent that might be something like yeah that I consider it that it's an it's an alternative it did um there would be no change to any other portion of the contract if we decided to pull it out the, the other thing that I kind of like I know it's, it's only a small piece but we've been looking at all the lakefront walking paths and everything and this would kind of be an extension of that if as we move on with you know doing our lakefront walking path. Yeah, but my only concern is it's just like when a single block has sidewalk and no other surrounding sidewalk, the degradation of the ends of that sidewalk happens much more rapidly um, than it would if it was connected. So that's my only concern is just watching it degrade at a much quicker rate since it's not connected to anything else. And that, and that was one of the reasons why asphalt was considered over an actual physical sidewalk. That, yeah. that, that was specific. But I mean, if we get the federal rate, I mean, $2,600. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a no-brainer on that one. I mean, the material probably would, would almost cost that for yeah. us to do it ourselves. So. so we can't do that contingent on? I think, yeah, I think that's possibly essentially would be instructing the city manager to award the contract alternative contingent upon approval by Caltrans uh, of the match. Uh, you know, and I'm just thinking too, just just from two local businesses on South Main, um, you know, outside of, of, you know, our construction here, um, looking for some newer sidewalk type thing. And, you know, at this point, $24,000 would, would go a long way um, for some new sidewalk type stuff down there. And um, so just to justify it, but I mean, I, I find it much easier to justify $2,600, you know, for that asphalt. Yeah, yeah we can get a lot more for just a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I walked the same area several times with my uh, wife. We walk around that way, and it would be nice to see that type of aspect all the way through that area until it gets to the wider stretch uh, once you get past the lakeshore area. Because yeah, it's, it's the opposite, because of course the west side is is gravel and it's still the easement from people's front yard. So yeah, correct. Yeah, you know, it's really you know not even, and that's the good side to walk on. Okay. Any other questions? Or okay. I'll open this up uh, to the public uh, for any comments on this uh, award or the addition to the uh, asphalt aspect of it. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council um, for more discussion or questions or maybe a motion. Mr. Mayor, if there is no further discussion, I would uh, move to authorize the city manager to sign the construction contract award for the Lakeshore Boulevard Emergency Storm Damage Project uh, with the inclusion of alternate A uh, pursuant to receiving the 
federal participation rate at 88.53%. Uh, to Granite Construction Company, additionally find that the good faith effort by a Granite Construction Company and the soliciting of the DBE participation is adequate. Second. So if I could just clarify the motion, that would mean that were Caltrans not to approve alternative A, the award of the principal still goes to Granite. However, there would be no award as to the alternative, correct? Correct. Okay. If that's consensus. Yeah. And the motion and the second, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? We're good to go. Kevin, thank you. Thank you. So we'll start working on that extension of the blacktop down the rest of that. Right? Down the rest of that? I, I would love to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, safe definitely. route to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Thanks again, Ken. Um, wow, short. And we we don't have a meeting next next month, correct? First meeting, first um, Tuesday. Yeah, just not the first one. Yeah, just not the first one. Okay. Uh, moving on, miscellaneous reports. Margaret, do you have anything tonight? Um, nothing further to report. Well, actually, just a uh, splashing was really, uh, they had a really good turnout this year. Unfortunately, we had the accident with those minor injuries, but uh, it was, we had the, the biggest turnout that they've had, and it's growing every year, and it was a really, really nice event. And uh, pancake breakfast was great. That was fun. Thank you. I'm glad to see no one got injured worse than they did in that one yeah. incident. It's amazing. It was, it was scary, but yeah. yeah. David? I have nothing to report. Okay. Well done. Just thought I'd pick on you. <laughs> You're so quiet there. Okay, thank you. So we make sure. Chief? Oh, yeah, I'll just mention we have another copy of the cop set up for October 4th of this year down at Suzy Q's. Um, and uh, we'll have officers and deputies from outside agencies there as well. So we're hoping to get, get a large attendance from the public. Well, if it, We're if not it, the town, yeah, we are. But if it builds on last time, it should be good because it was it was slammed last time. It was great, and multiple agencies too. It was great to see all the agencies involved. Yeah, I, I hope it'll be good again. So, sorry, you guys will be out of town. I forgot about that. Oh, I'm sorry, since they're they're out, I didn't make the last one, so I'll just have to wander down there and hang out. For That's all. right. The mayor's got our back on that one. Good. There we go. Okay. Anything else? Okay. okay. Kevin. Uh, just a quick uh, Main Street project update. Uh, they should be finishing the uh, curb and gutter <coughs> section on that last segment of block tonight, as well as uh, hopefully making some good progress, maybe getting half the block uh, in with concrete um, for the sidewalk, uh, with that block scheduled to be uh, done and complete uh, by the end of this week. Tree grates are expected to be here at the end of the week, and we're planning on uh, the repaving of the section uh, beginning next Sunday night. So there is an end to this. Um, it's, it's coming together really, really good and uh, very excited to be seeing the uh, final product here pretty soon. That's going to be followed immediately the next week there, that first week in October, with uh, the paving of Bevins Street as well. So we've been working with neighbors over there. That's, that's all I have. It looks good. Kelly? Once more, Mr. Nothing important. Pro tip? Tomorrow morning, Flasco and Clear Lake. And um, there sure is nothing like a small town for homecoming parade. Huh? <laughs> you guys all go out? I loved it. So, say it's cute for handle on the street and everything. So, it's short and sweet, but it sure is fun. I'm glad it turned out I was actually out of town, but the great. guys were able to take care of it. Uh, I would echo on the parade. I uh, had the honor of judging of the floats, and I want to say the, the freshman yeah. class, boy, they stepped it up and did a really nice job. Yeah, they're the uh, checkoff sheet that we had to make sure that they uh, basically not only qualified the float, but followed their instructions for the technology of its operating systems. And uh, they were uh, they were windows, and they uh, and they nailed it, which is kind of amazing because I mean. None of them were born when, you, when Windows first was <laughs> instituted, but uh, you know the amalgamation has come through. But yeah, it was it was really good, and and I heard the uh, the games were really well. I, I couldn't attend the games, but uh, yeah, it was a good good parade, and and it sounded like it was a, an excellent homecoming. 
Um, Canoc Day Challenge uh, this weekend, of course. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and, and not just that, but if you follow through the Canoc Day Challenge, uh, right into uh, there's the breast cancer uh, run as well, and uh, Oktoberfest all on the same day. So it's a very, very busy day in Lake Court. Good day to be in Lake Court. And uh, next week, our annual conference, Tuesday through Friday for Elite California Cities, and uh, the Pear Festival coming up um, as well. So lots of uh, Lots of good stuff going on. That's it for me. Lots of good events. Uh, the technology thing with uh, the youth, it's fun to hand a uh, rotary phone to a young person and watch them push their finger <laughs> in the openings. <laughs> <laughs> and they can't figure it out. <laughs> Actually, I had nothing else uh, tonight that I was going to say, it, but you made me think of something. Is there, um, is there some action between the city and Main Street that needs to happen? Are they buying the trees? Are they for the tree part of it? The city will probably be purchasing the tree. We're going to try and partner with Main Street Association on, you know, perhaps uh, coming up with the memorial dedication. Oh, process. okay. I was, I was thinking they, they were thinking there was some purchase thing going on there, but maybe that was my confusion. Yeah. So right, we're, we're, let's more try to figure out the plaque and placement, placement you know, for okay. it. Yeah. We, yeah, there's, do we have a couple people approached us already that would like to buy their own tree and Correct. have it dedicated, so. Okay. Right. Oh, and then, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I go, yeah. Kelly, one more, the employee appreciation, are we still scheduled for the 14th on that one? Um, yes, we're oh. just uh, confirming location and, okay. um, yeah, it should be fun. We have some good things. In mind. No more Achilles softball. <laughs> no, but there's opportunity for lots of for injury. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not injury, but I have potential no embarrassment. Idea. Pride, and pride yes. injury. Yes. It's just pride <laughs> injury. Sure. That's okay. I have no idea what you got planned, but you look so mischievous <laughs> when you said that. Like, oh my. Okay. What's the date? I don't. Know. October. The 14th of October. Friday. 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 Okay. Uh, with that, I will call this meeting. Thank you.